Hi, this is JW. This is part two of the Variac series. Uh, in this video, we'll be looking at the electrical side of things and see if it's safe to use and if it does work and if it needs any further repairs. Well, despite what I said in the other video, I have taken it off the base. It was only actually three bolts which held it to that plate, so that'll just make it much easier for cleaning it and uh, repainting the base. I've also cleaned the thing at the sides and the top of it. See, it's considerably cleaner than it was before. This is actually an adhesive, which is presumably just to hold the coils in position. Attached a couple of wires here just for testing purposes. Uh, this would be the input. These two are common together, as are these two. That's the variable output, uh, which obviously alters as you turn the knob there. And then there's some additional taps here, which would be used for various different configurations. Uh, in this particular setup, it's 240 in and it's all to 240 out, but if you use, uh, say, those two, you could have a higher output voltage than the incoming, and there's various uh, possibilities there. So before we actually connect it to the mains, we need to do a few tests on it just to make sure it's not going to blow up or do any other bad things, so we'll uh, get those done and see how they work. Okay, the first test we'll do is just to check the uh, resistance of the winding, so we'll just connect the leads across the whole thing. Now we should see a fairly low ohms resistance. Obviously we don't want to see a short because that would indicate it's going to blow up when you plug it in. And obviously if it's open circuit then it's again totally failed, so it will be a disaster. Okay, well that's not too bad. I mean that's what 1.7 ohms. That's certainly within the realms of possibility. If we connect to the middle one we should get a slightly lower value. Yeah, and we do. And again, if we move up the uh, taps, it should get progressively lower. Yeah, and again, if we go there, it should be higher. Which it is, so that's reasonably promising. At least it's uh, some realm of uh, capability of being connected together. Uh, the other thing we should do, of course, is just to connect between the uh, bottom and the variable tap. It's about 3 ohms, which seems a bit high. 7. Okay, well that looks a bit uh, erratic, but then it's probably the carbon brush is a bit worn, so again, not too surprising. Now the second test we need to do is just confirm that the uh, windings haven't shorted out to the metal casing. If that happened it will be an extremely dangerous device, so as we know all these are connected together, we're just connected to say, one of the terminals on the front there. And we'll just connect onto the stud here. Now we're using a test voltage of uh, 500 volts. Should see many hundreds of mega ohms. Yeah, well, that's in the sort of 200 odd range, 170 odd, so that seems reasonable. Let's check to the center spindle also. I think we'll go for that terminal, they're all linked anyway. And again, well over 500, so that's fine. So it would appear that this center bit is not electrically connected to that. I suppose it's reasonable. No, it isn't, so again, that's exactly what you'd want. We could connect there, we're just going to do the same. Yeah, that sort of 200 odd sort of area. Okay, well, that's fine, that's uh, certainly no problems with that. So, the next thing to do is just connect it up to a power supply, and we'll see what sort of voltages we can get out of it. Right, we've got here the power supply coming in. This is actually from an isolating transformer, which is on the floor out of sight. Uh, the wires just go to the uh, two inputs of the transformer there, the line at the bottom, neutral at the top. Uh, this meter set up just to measure the voltage. We're not going to put any real load on this at the moment. So we've got it between the centre terminal there, which is the uh, variable contact, and also the neutral on the top there. So if we turn the knob to the end of its travel, we should get either no voltage or very small in the order of just a couple of volts. Okay, we've got one volt there, so 
that will seem likely. And if we turn this, we should see the voltage increase. Is that 40? 75? 100? 127? 150? 175? 215? 230, 250, and that's right round on the stop, so that's 256 right round there. Let's disconnect that. Let's see what the actual incoming voltage is. It should be that 256 again. So let's connect onto the uh, fixed terminal at the bottom there again. That's uh, just directly across the supply there. So, yeah, again, we get that 256, which is exactly what we would expect. Okay, I've just changed the test lead there. So I've got the uh, neutral connected here at the top, and I'll just use this probe here, which uh, has that insulated uh, covering on. We'll just see what voltages we get on the uh, taps on the side there. So, getting a bit of a small voltage there, that's probably just pick up from the wires being in proximity there. So at the bottom, we should have that full voltage. Yeah, 256, this should be a bit lower. 225, 127, so that's about half, being in the middle, not surprising, and then this should be lower still, 31, and obviously that'll be zero. Oh, yeah, 0 0.1. Okay, so again, that seems to be working properly. Just disconnect that there. Now, just as a quick aside, um, I mentioned the other video, it had this whole mains lead with the black, red and green cores, so, so that'd be a little early 70s. Uh, I actually found this little leaflet, which is from uh, 1970. Uh, so it says actually from uh, 1st of July 1970, uh, flexes of that colour can't be sold anymore. So we are talking uh, 1960s at the absolute latest. Right, that obviously works, so uh, I think one other thing we'll do is just take off this front plate just have a look at the condition of the wiring behind. Obviously it's not too bad because the thing does actually work, though it's always good to have a visual inspection to make sure there's no obvious damage or the insulation is deteriorated. Okay, I've just taken the uh, top off of this to see how the track looks. Uh, that's the track there on the top of the transformer. It uh, looks to be okay, actually. There's no uh, obvious irregularities or damage to that. Uh, here's the brushes. Uh, it's got a twin uh, setup there. I presume that's the uh, Dura track thing referred to on the side of the device. Uh, they are apparently very short. If you look at the actual spring distance there, there's very little bit about left, so let's see if we can get some replacements for those, although there's still a reasonable amount left on there. Now wiring here appears to be plastic insulation. It's a bit dusty and black, but other than that it seems to be in pretty decent condition. So I think what we need to do is just clean the back of this with this sort of black uh, soot-like material. Uh, clean the track there, and let's say we'll see the possibility of getting some new uh, brushes for that because as you can see there there's very little remaining on either of those.
see there's a lot of black there, which is probably the remains of the carbon brushes. So let's clean as much off of that as we can. Just using a bit of uh, alcohol on this just to get the initial dirt removed. stuff off the back of this. substance as possible as it could well be at least partly conductive as it's probably the remains of the brushes that have been burnt off or worn off plus I don't actually know where this thing was installed and in the first video saw the complete state that the top was in so it may well be uh, some kind of metal or uh, other type of dust in which case it would possibly be conductive so We'll uh, clean off as much as possible of that. What I need to say is plastic covered and it looks to be in perfectly fine condition, so we don't need to replace any of that. Now, for the track here, it looks reasonably uh, clean there, but we'll just use some uh, other cleaning solvent there just to clean off that uh, exposed part. varied. I remember at the beginning you see that basic uh, resistance test and it came up rather erratic and that's due to dirt and other contamination on the tracks here. Now once we finish that it should come up clean or as clean as you can get so due to clean part of the cloth dry that off. Yeah, there's a minor, minor bit there, but it's as clean as it's going to be getting. Now we could just leave this like this, but unfortunately if you leave bare metal exposed it does tend to corrode, which obviously is not what we want. So we need to put something else on there to avoid it corroding away. So I've got here some of that, which is uh, contact cleaner with some uh, lubricant in it. So a small amount of lubricant will just leave a very thin coating on that so we don't have any corrosion issues. Right, so that's all cleaned and uh, finished then. Don't have to dry that, that would just air dry and leave that uh, lubricant on the surface. Now this part uh, is fairly grubby as well, this centre core is actually black, not uh, dust coloured, and there's quite a lot of paint loss occurring on this top plate. And you see the uh, paint there is just peeling away, so I presume it wasn't very well adhered in the first place because Normally you wouldn't expect it just to drop off of one area. Let's just go around there. This is just a cloth here. I assume it's most of it is just falling off and crumbling away. So to avoid that dropping into the 
contact area and causing issues, we'll just remove as much of that as possible. As you can see, the uh, substantial amount of paint just from that quick going over with a the cloth there. So I think I'll take this outside and do it and then uh, come back and see what it's like. Again, I'll just clean that up uh, outside and see most of the paint has actually just fell off, so not uh, too bad, just leaves the bare metal. It doesn't have to be uh, painted, obviously, no one's going to see it. I thought I'd have a bit of bare metal rather than uh, great chunks of paint dropping off into the mechanism. Uh, the centre is just a plastic uh, tube there. The bottom just sits in the bottom plate. There doesn't appear to be any kind of bearing at all. It's just a sort of lightweight fit into the uh, hole at the bottom. I see there's a bit of uh, scoring on it there, which is to be expected. There's still some paint on the edge here, which seems to be fairly well attached, so I'm not really too bothered about that. And the top uh, is relatively clean. So I think I will try and get some new brushes for this, because these are pretty much worn down to the end of their life. And obviously it would make sense to replace them before actually reassembling the device. Right, that's it for part two. Uh, next time I'll hopefully look at getting some new brushes fitted in it and reassembling and of course retesting it after being reassembled.